Hello, Mark Scott with HurricaneTrack.com here. Hurricane Outlook and Discussion Time. Hurricane Maria now prompting tropical storm watches and a storm surge watch for portions of the North Carolina coast as the track is expected to get close enough to bring tropical storm conditions to the region over the next 48 hours or so and the potential for storm surge, life-threatening storm surge, certainly exists still to be ironed out because we're talking about oh, I don't know, the next 48 to 72 hours or so and there is still enough uncertainty in the track uh, you know, the, the normal probability here that it could be anywhere within this cone of uncertainty raises the idea that there is still the chance that there could be tropical, I'm sorry, hurricane conditions uh, along the Outer Banks. But right now it's just expected that we will see tropical storm conditions. And if you take this circle right here of tropical storm force winds and you were to just advance it up along this track, you know, and it's something like that size right there, I think you could easily see what the problem is. And you say, well, just tropical storm conditions, whatever. Well, the folks on the Outer Banks know that that's not whatever. Uh, until this gets up and gets past the latitude of areas like Cape Hatteras and Rodanthe and Kitty Hawk, then the winds are going to be out of the north and northeast, really just pounding the coast. And then some of those north winds, as this goes by, will then possibly drive the Pamlico Sound towards areas like Ocracoke and uh, Buxton and Hatteras Village and maybe even what we call it down east North Carolina near uh, eastern Carteret County, possibly Craven County. We just have to wait and see how close this tracks. And there's still enough uncertainty and enough error in the 48 and 72 hour forecast positions here that any closer track this way, I mean we're even talking about just a half a degree west, uh, could make the effects stronger. And conversely, to be fair, if it's a little bit more to the east side, like that for some reason, then the effects would be far less. But this is not a case where this is turning north because there is an approaching trough coming to boot it out and it's a matter of timing. This is about how the northward progression is blocked by this big ridge that's developing and I'm going to show you that in satellite and then whether or not that's going to be able to aim this into the northwest just a little bit. In fact, we can see that here on the visible satellite animation of the East Coast. What a great satellite picture, and you can clearly see this very, very well-defined ridge of high pressure up here. This is the remnants, the literally the skeletal remains, if that, of um, uh, Jose, what was once Hurricane Jose, just dwindling away out here. And then here is very large Hurricane Maria, and then here's Hurricane Lee, tiny little Lee out there, Making a name for itself. Little Lee. Luckily, it's out in the middle of nowhere. Isn't that incredible, though? Let's just zoom in on that. Let's give Lee a little bit of, uh, of limelight here. Uh, look at that. Just a tiny... I'm not going to use the floater, but look at that. That's just amazing. Probably going to be a Cat 3 hurricane at some point. And the hurricane force winds extend, I don't know, just a few miles out from the center, really. And it's just amazing. Absolutely incredible. Doesn't this just... Maybe some of you are like, yeah, whatever, Mark. But it's amazing. It really is, and it's too bad. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. It's really too bad that these hurricanes hurt so many people and cause so much misery. And they do. Just ask people in Puerto Rico and in Dominica, etc., Houston, Rockport, you name it, right? We know the history. But other than that, I mean, you have to marvel at what we are looking at. Just incredible that you can have... This also came off the coast of Africa, as did this. And so why is Lee so tiny and Maria is so big? Answer me that one day, you PhD students out there, and um, that'll be very interesting. But anyway, back to the topic at hand. This distracted me, and you can't help but be distracted by something so amazing. This ridging right here, you got to really watch and see how this evolves over the next 48 hours, because seriously, every wobble or lurch, you know, either way, especially if the net effect is up closer to 75 degrees longitude here, that's not exactly right, but the closer this gets to the Outer Banks now, every mile is going to count. Now, tomorrow morning, I'm going to focus in on the impacts here, and we're really going to talk about what to expect. We'll have another night of model guidance, 
the hurricane local statements will be generated, and we'll get a lot better idea from the forecast discussions on what to expect in eastern North Carolina. But right now, tropical storm watch in effect for portions of the coast, and a storm surge watch, and that's something new, the storm surge watch uh, for this area, uh, for the country, uh, because of the threat separately from the wind of life-threatening storm surge. And just as an example, let's click here in eastern North Carolina, and you can see we have high surf advisory in effect, the purple area here, tropical storm watch, and then the offshore waters, of course, tropical storm warning, and the storm surge watch not reflected here just yet, but that should come out soon enough. And again, we can talk about this in more detail tomorrow. Um, I want to show you in the eastern Pacific, we have tropical storm Pilar, I think that's how you say it. And this is making landfall right now, or close to it, along the Mexican coastline. I mean, just the center, just skirting the coast. And uh, so Puerto Vallarta and the areas near there and north. Heavy rainfall, certainly the biggest issue here. And we had some video that was sent in from Dave, one of our followers and one of our supporters. And Dave, I'm really pleased to be able to show people this. Dave is down in, as it says right there, he sent this in at 12.54. I'm assuming that would be Marina Vallarta time in the Port of Vallarta area in Mexico. Not bad, but you can see and hear gray skies, a little bit of swell coming in from Tropical Storm Pilar in the eastern Pacific. Dave, thanks for sharing that. So, we now have the Tropical Storm watches. Things should start moving. Um in terms of people getting ready, etc. And let me just say this, because tomorrow morning, like I said, I do want to have a little bit more time, overnight models, and we need to let everything kind of settle in, the area forecast discussions to get updated, more information on the storm surge watch, and, and we have time. So by tomorrow morning, I will know a lot more and can speak very intelligently about what to expect. But let me say this, the main issue is going to be Highway 12, I do believe. And that's anywhere from the northern part of the Outer Banks, maybe Kiratuk, south through Kitty Hawk, Kill Devil Hills, Nags Head, and then especially the Pea Island area. And folks that live out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And then down into Rodanthe, the Merlot Beach area, and possibly as the Outer Banks turn and turns westward and west-southwest, where Hatteras Village is on towards Ocracoke, which is in Hyde County, that area, it's it's really going to depend on how close to the coast Maria gets in terms of the north wind. But the, the bottom line, this is going to be a long-duration event. This is not a hurricane passing in and out over a 24-hour period. We're going to be dealing this with this for anywhere from 24 to 36 to maybe 48 hours, if not longer. And that's going to be the problem. Four high tide cycles that I can count already with a piling up of the water. So this is going to be problematic. They are redoing, uh, they're, they're putting in a new bridge out there to replace the old uh, Bonner Bridge that goes over Oregon Inlet. This will affect that a little bit at the temporary bridge at the Pea Island area that Hurricane Irene created, like an inlet. And there's a little, what we call the Lego Bridge that goes across there. It's a temporary bridge. They're also building an elevated roadway there and this is just not what's needed, okay? So this is not a massive impact event, but this is exactly what I was talking about when I said you can't just say, oh, it's out to sea, and there's very little worries except for swells and, you know, big waves. You know, that's what the graphics show with no context when you see a turn out to sea like that. And you need to have this kind of information if you're not going to read the discussions and you're not going to read the public advisories. And who does, right? Who does that all the time except me? And really, like, hurricane aficionados that really follow this stuff closely. Other than that, most people see it on the news or they see it on their app and they see a curve out to sea and they say, that's it. And like I said, I'm not trying to be right. I was trying to keep you informed and say, hey, this is a possibility, and doggone it, here it is, all right? I'm going to be up there starting tomorrow night in the Outer Banks. I will be setting out equipment to bring you live coverage, and I'm going to actually be testing some new stuff uh, for the future. So 
will use this opportunity to do so while also bringing uh, first-hand, immersive, live video from where it's all happening. So if you've got the app on the App Store or Google Play Hurricane Impact, you'll want to start checking that starting tomorrow night. And I'll talk about that more tomorrow as well. All right, well, that's it for me for today. Hopefully the rest of this summertime sinus cold will go away by tomorrow. Already feeling a lot better this afternoon from where I was this morning, so that's good because it's going to be a busy few days ahead. All right, time to hit the road again. Have a great rest of your Sunday evening. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Mark Setta for HurricaneTrack.com. A lot more on Hurricane Maria and its expected impact on the Outer Banks of North Carolina starting tomorrow morning.